Well, this is it, baby. This is the championship week, the last and final episode we have before the biggest weekend of fantasy football, and we got your backs. We're going to talk through all the Team Nasty boys. We're going to talk about the great game last night that was so enjoyable. Thank you to the doctor and a very, very special wheel of shame today. You don't want to miss it. Make sure you like, subscribe, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, December 30th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Jason Moore, Mike Ride, Andy Holloway with you. One last time before week 17, well, championship. I mean, it kind of started yesterday. It did start. One one final time this week before the remainder. Yeah, that's much better. Of week 17. This shows about accuracy. If nothing else, Mike. Yes. We, we are known for our accurate statements about what we do. Is, yes. And yeah. uh, like the date. Never get that wrong. No. Just a few times here or there. Pronunciation of player names. Oh, the best. Foot Clam Friday today, back into the forecast. The Wheel of Shame once again making an appearance. Andy's Wheel. I mean, most of the time. <laughs> we did have a nail biter last yes. week. I mean, we went. Jason and Mike's team were nearly identical, and yet somehow during basically the final moments, I had. My team was in between their scores. Yes, we were, if you remember from last week, somehow we just, Jason and I had a ton of overlap. We had only two different players, and yet with those players, our gap was point two points, which Jason defeated me, so it was... Dominated. It, yes, you, you crushed me uh, yet again. And so then it was me versus Andy, or I, yeah, me versus Andy, because no matter what, Jason was safe, and it was Gardner Minshew... Versus Jahan Dotson plus some points. It was all over the place. Like I mean, a it was really, the final drive of the game that Gardner. Yes, a really really wild game to me. Uh, where it, you get and you the Eagles drive where I'm messaging the guys. I'm like, okay, here we go. Gardner's at two ninety nine. I just need that DK. I need one yard for the DK bonus. Miles Sanders fumble. Yeah, I thought I had a shot there. And it was like, is Gardner gonna throw the ball again? I don't know. It it was. It was really a nail biter. If you don't make me dress up as Gardner Minshew today, I'll be very disappointed. <laughs> Prepare for disappointment. Dang it. I will not be disappointed. No, you will not. Um, <laughs> Nor will you, Foot Clan. We'll get into the breakdown of last night's game, Jason's reaction to it, of course. Uh he was he was out on Twitter letting people know what to root for. Um But first. Foot Clan Friday. Well, we have a winner. $100 to FantasyChamps.com. Good time of year to win some money to FantasyChamps.com because it's trophy time. And the winner is, is maybe my favorite name that I've seen on Patreon. It, it's certainly the winner this year. Grandmaster Flapjacks. The Grandmaster himself. Uh, congratulations. You are a winner. Of one hundred dollars to fantasychamps.com, fantasychamps.com right now. Uh, if you did not win, if you are not the grandmaster, don't worry about it. You can also still have flapjacks. Uh, you can have flapjacks, yep. and you can enjoy a, a very special end of season promotion. If you buy a trophy over there, you can put the code free ring in your cart, and then add uh, one of their rings, and you will get it for free. So you can take your, you know, let's say you win, let's say you win this weekend, right, and and you get a trophy for your league. That's for you. And then you get a ring, and you get to wear it around. So it's like a trophy for your body. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, that's that's what they call it. We have, this is my body trophy. Yeah. In our studio, we have the display <laughs> cases for the rings, and we've got all of our all of our 
rings set up beautifully. Which, running out of room. That's true. We're going to need a bigger office. <laughs> but uh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you for supporting the show over there at jointhefoot.com. The Foot Clan title shirts are up on the website. They went up yesterday. So uh, every year we have a new championship shirt. Shopballers.com if you want to check that out. Getting into the recap. I mean, it was a bumpy ride again for the Cowboys. It was. Not the definitive uh, dominating performance you had hoped to see. Also, really not a lot of production on the ground from Ezekiel Elliott, but he did get into the end zone for, I believe, a ninth straight week. Dak, uh, you know, 282-2, and two, but two picks, a fumble, and uh, they, they pulled away in the second half, but the Titans put up a fight with Josh Dobbs, who was serviceable. I think Sure. I think a, I think where we ended up here was at first we thought, well, maybe Dobbs is getting the start because they want to preserve Malik Willis. Uh, where I where I ended up and where the broadcast seemed to take us was that this was a an opportunity for Dobbs to compete for that job, and um, and he won it. I think so. I I definitely think he so. only I, took like two he, sacks. He and, is able to move the ball, and this was against a really good Dallas Cowboys defense, and there were also a handful of very important drops where he made a very yeah, good Robert Woods yeah, like a good pass hit a guy in the hands like on a third and eight and he also drive hit, is over hit digs in the hands and that's true he he dropped it from the other team yeah I mean it wasn't perfect by any means but it, if better you, if you yeah. emergency started Hassan Haskins which we did nasty, nasty. <laughs> Wait. nasty. we take what we can get Two for 13 through the air and 12 for 40 on the ground. Not no, great. No touchdowns. <laughs> Not great is the answer to that. Not great, but I will tell you this, and I saw other people sharing the same sentiment who had to start Haskins. I've never been happier with seven and a half <laughs> fantasy points in my life. Like, I, I look at that seven and a half, I'm like, okay. Okay, we d we didn't yes. get we didn't get a zero. We didn't get a two. Uh, I will take seven and a half from Haskins and try to battle elsewhere in my lineup. It started very poorly. Uh, Jason and I in Dino Junior, we were forced to uh, resort to nastiness, and we also had a slight hiccup before the game started because we were able to add Malik Davis, and we had kind of a last second conversation of, do you put Malik Davis in? Over Haskins? Over Hassan Haskins. It's would have been better for you. A point, slightly. Yeah. By like almost <laughs> but at the nothing. <laughs> but at the beginning of the game, it was Malik Davis was getting in early. He looked good. He he looked all right, at least, you know, especially at the beginning of the game. This is the Cowboys backup running back who played for Tony Pollard, by the way, if you didn't watch the game. But they got immediately in the red zone, and it was like they were just moving, and Malik Davis was in. And I – because we went with Haskins, and I started freaking out. But then someone called the timeout, and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. We got to get Zeke back on the field, <laughs> to which I celebrate. Isn't Malik Davis interesting? He was a rookie, and Tony Pollard's a free agent. That is. And they won't give Zeke all the work. You correct. know what I mean? Especially moving forward. So I think Malik Davis is an interesting name with how productive Extremely. Pollard was. And he's good in the passing game. Go look on – legit, go look on your Dino waiver wire because he might be there. And this was a shout-out to Brooks of – Brooks, of course, with his infinite bench spots, picked him up in our main dynasty league. And he I already went, has him. Yeah, well, he did. This was just like a couple days ago. This is eight years ago. <laughs> it was a couple days ago, and I went, "Holy crap! That is that is such a good pickup right now." With the, it's a low percentage chance, of course, but you got to take these low percentage shots of if Tony Pollard moves on and the Cowboys don't add anybody. Malik Davis is the backup. Like, this is crazy that he's on Dynasty Wires. The biggest performance of the night went to Dalton Schultz. Oh, so, the, the doctor! Yes! The doctor will see you now. Yeah, he got paged a couple times. He Seven in the end zone. for 56, two touchdowns on 10 targets. C.D. Lamb was 11 for 100, led the way receiving uh, yardage-wise. But Dalton with the biggest performance for your fantasy teams and for Jason Soul. He wrote a prescription that is very helpful for this weekend. <laughs> has he cured you yet, or is this oh, no, just he on has, the way? He has basically made it to where now our teams, because I'm going up against a very good team, and I obviously lost Derrick Henry and, and Jalen Hurts, uh, we think. Um, the, he, he made it to where now we can have a fair fight. Let's get in there and, and throw, throw down. I mean, it's interesting because the doctor's performance may have 
genuinely affected your blood pressure for the weekend. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So you can thank the doctor thank for that. Thank doctor. And um, we're going to jump into the news. We do have uh, the judge in the house today on the ones and twos. Oh, hey, we, got another, we got another special uh, deucer in the house. Yeah, if you go oh. over to Deucer's Alley, my son is here today along with Jay Gritz. Running an internship. So we're hoping he can achieve some level of contribution in excess of a cardboard bear. Actually, I, I was hoping he can really step it up from Al Borland. Oh, which yeah. Which I assume it's, he can. Yeah, it's not that. Like, that's a step over bar. It, yeah, I actually. It's not a jump. It's a good question of, like, what's higher, Al Borland okay. or the cardboard bear? The bar? Yeah, where, like, who's. Oh, I thought you were going with something like, like Caleb is here today. AKA Joshua Dobbs, and then like Malik Willis, you know, is yeah. Al Borland. Huh. That's and fair. maybe we're, maybe we're gonna get a replacement. Compare contrast for Sweet. the for the playoffs. What are the child labor laws here in Arizona? <laughs> um, yeah, it's I okay. Mean, we're not paying them. <laughs> That's what I mean. Can we can we get away with that? Yes, you can. You can force people to donate their labor as long as you don't pay them. Yeah, that's Fantastic. really cool policy, Mike. <laughs> into the Not news, my kid. Into the news we go. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. James Conner didn't practice on Thursday due to illness. This we don't expect it to be consequential, but you got to sure. monitor this now. But yesterday, this was. Well, this this is nothing, and now it's this is probably well, nothing. Well, let's you're right, and uh, if it isn't nothing, Keontae Ingram would be the next man up for Arizona if you want to get. Nasty. Oh yeah, nasty. and you, you know what I do. Nasty. It's time. Alvin Kamara <laughs> not at practice on Thursday. This is listed as personal slash quadriceps. Okay. The quads in there now. Well, the quadriceps have been really mean to Kamara, so it's, it feels very personal. Oh, it's a personal attack yeah. by his own body. Yeah. Hmm. Um. The 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 quote from He's losing yes gains. The, the quote from yesterday was that it was personal and that it was not expected to affect his availability for this weekend. Now the now you go another day of him missing practice, and once again, if you won't get. David Johnson. I don't know how I feel about is this drop. <laughs> out there uh, for all the nasty boys. Don't worry. We'll play. we'll play it out over this weekend. Uh, Jay, yes, we will. Jalen Hurts <laughs> limited on Thursday. Um, Nick Sirianni said he's out there. He did some good things at practice. It's still very much up in the air. He's not eager to announce a starter this week. So we'll find out if he returns. Um, you know, it's, it's tough. <clears throat> uh, I'll say this. If you have Gardner Minshew already, <laughs> I know okay, you're and, I know and you going. have Jalen Hurts, and that's what I have. If Jalen Hurts is named the starter, you start Jalen Hurts. However, that does not mean the world doesn't exist where both players play in the game. Yeah, if if Jalen Hurts goes out and plays a really good half, and, they and they've get, got a big lead, and they've got a big lead, and this game is you know pretty meaningless for them. Uh, if, if it looks like they're going to win, they'll they'll have uh, you know another game and a half opportunity to just lock up that one seed. You could see Jalen Hurts for protection and for the situation. Just say, "Hey, the great job, shut it down." So I, I have, I have that thought of like, is it better to have Hurts than Minshew? Minshew could end up throwing uh, a pick six and being in a more competitive game where he comes back and ends up uh, having a a real full high ceiling game. Whereas Hurts, if he plays outstanding, what you you the the his method to usual great games then I don't feel like he plays in the fourth quarter. So I, I see both sides. In the end, I would prefer the guy that got me there. I would prefer Hurts to be in my lineup. We'll talk through Austin Eckler, Debo Samuel, and Stephon Diggs in the matchups today because all three of those matchups we're covering uh, on today's podcast. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Yesterday, we covered the Cardinals, Falcons, Bears, Lions, Broncos, Chiefs, Dolphins, Patriots, Colts, Giants, Saints, Eagles, Panthers, Buccaneers. So you can uh, click on yesterday's show if you want to hear those breakdowns. Today, we've got eight more games to cover, starting with the Cleveland Browns, who are 6-9, and nine, taking on the Washington Commanders, 7-7-1. Seven, seven, 
The DraftKings Sportsbook line here is Washington minus 2.5. The over-under is 40.5. Washington needs this game really, really badly. If you believe in Ron Rivera, if you believe in the the motivation and the uh, leader of men, uh, Ron Rivera, then I think he'll have these guys ready to play. Now, Carson Wentz is going to take over at quarterback. And I don't know if you can motivate Carson Wentz. He might be his own thing. I mean, you can motivate him, but he's still just – he's going to do what he does, which is play mediocre football and make a mistake at the worst possible time. <laughs> Well, in this game, you, you have two teams that play very slowly. They run the football. Uh, Brian Robinson was Mike's start of the week on yesterday's show. And, you know, he's a good start in this game against Cleveland. Their run defense isn't the complete, abysmal, porous yeah, destruction from the beginning now. of the year, but it's still right in the middle. And Nick Chubb, you have not had man complete, full Nick Chubb. No, he's, he got Voldemorted. Uh, he did. Yeah, the uh, the Dark Wizard casting a spell over his touchdowns, really, because yes. the production on the ground has been fine if he was getting into the end zone, but he's been the RB 32-29, 32-23 over the last four games. Jason, this is a tough Washington defense. Nick Chubb is going to end the week as an RB... I think as a RB2, probably a low-end RB2. So he's someone you're going to start. He's not a smash... Uh, play that I think you're you're terrified to see across your lineup, but he's also not really a question mark. You're not going yep. to decide to throw in a nasty boy over someone like Nick Chubb. Terry McLaurin, oh, we'll get to find out if the Carson Wentz uh, versus Heineke situation impacts McLaurin's target share. It did in the beginning of the year. Jahan Dotson's and been coming last, on in a big way. Say last week of uh, trying to pull up Carson Wentz passing attempts because one of those targets was Terry. So Carson Wentz came in, played about 26% of the snaps, threw the ball 16 times. One of those was to Terry. So you already have a little bit of a – Yeah, uh, I mean, look, and this is – And it's a bad matchup. I'm not saying I'm benching Terry McLaurin because the dude is a stud. Well, let, me, let me ask you. Okay, yeah, you can try and give me some names. Well, no, I'm going to give you one uh, on the same team because it, you, you could – Okay, oh – I mean, Jahan Dodson, Jahan Dodson is officially in the on fire range. Yeah, he is. And Terry McLaurin, we saw the example last week. We've seen the beginning of the year. Would you play Dodson over McLaurin? I I would. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Jason, what would you do? Oh, man. I was very <laughs> thankful that the question was to you. I think it's a legitimate question. Um, I also think it's a legitimate question as to whether or not you could play Curtis Samuel. And because of that, this three-way split, and honestly, Logan Thomas will be involved as well. He will. For better or worse, Car Carson Wentz is better than Taylor Heineke. I know, this. don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that Carson Wentz is good, but Carson Wentz will go through his progressions, go through his reads, spread the ball around a little bit more than Taylor Heineke did. In a bad matchup, in a game where you can beat this team on the ground, I mean, you look at the last month, and Cleveland has really shut down quarterbacks. To answer the question, I prefer Dotson to McLaurin in a vacuum. I don't want to start the pass catchers for the Washington Manders right now. Amari Cooper has not finished in the top 30 with Voldemort at quarterback. Hmm. hmm. Is there a world where you'd pivot away from Amari Cooper this week? Because Certainly. Uh, the matchup is bad. Yeah, there there are definitely going to be names. Jahan Dotson or Amari Cooper. I would still stick with Amari Cooper. I'd go. Oh, so that means you're Cooper over Terry McLaurin, then? Yeah, I I I think that I mean, de facto, the, this al is, the algebra checks out. This is a game that the the passing side of I'm not excited about, but. Uh, Amari Cooper last week in the bad weather was the clear number one target. Ten targets, six for 72. He is, in my opinion, the most talented individual wide receiver of all of these wide receivers on both sides of the field. So if I had to start one, I would go that direction. David Njoku is Jason's start of the week. 22% of the target since Deshaun Watson took over. He's a good play. Jacksonville 7-8. and eight. They take on the Houston Texans at 2-12-1. Let's go, Houston. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Jacksonville minus four. The over-under is 43.5. No, Mike is not 
a uh, loyal Lovey Smith fan. He is loyal to the Cardinals, <laughs> and he'd like to see Houston win some How more games. How dare you? Sorry, these, you are loyal to the Lovey Smith. These accusations, I just want a good competitive football game that ends with the Texans winning. It's What's incredible is if, you are, no reason. if you're genuinely asking for a good competitive football game, that is what the Texans have been providing for three consecutive weeks, including matchups against Dallas, Kansas City, winning last week. Jacksonville is in this precarious situation here where on paper you think this is going to be your moment, right? Go get the W. But the big game for them is next week against Tennessee. Houston beat them once this year. They are coming to play every every week right now, which is a credit to Lovey Smith and company. Um, I guess I'm just a little bit nervous that we won't see the Jacksonville Jaguars we've seen in these more difficult matchups. I would uh, I I would agree that you have worries here due to motivation. I mean, you you see uh, even last night when you've got a great team like the Dallas Cowboys going up against a team that is playing for nothing and has put their backups in, they come out and they, they don't go. It, we're human beings, right? Like it, we yeah. know this game doesn't matter as much. You're not up for it as much. And if, you know, when there's 11 people on each side of the ball, if your motivation's a little waning, you can have a disappointment. That being said, this is such a young Jacksonville Jaguars team. I, I think that Coach Doug Peterson is doing the right thing of saying this game is very important. This is not a playoff-tested, proven vet team. They need to – I think the motivation is just continue to play the great ball you've been playing. And because they're so young, my inclination is that the Jacksonville Jaguars come out and have a great game. I think they will – uh, handle their business by a wide margin. I think Travis Etienne in this good matchup it should be great. Uh, should have a should have a phenomenal game. Houston's allowing 169 rushing yards per game. Travis Etienne the past couple weeks has kind of got the mojo back. There was a, a little, little bit of a drop off there. Uh, it could have been related to you know miss he missed some time with injury right. He didn't miss time. He missed practice. It, well, no, no, no. There was a game where he he was active for it, and then early in the game. He, yeah, week 12 versus Baltimore, 8% of the snaps. It, exactly. He was taken out, but then came right back the next week. Yeah, so it, it, he has, you know, running back 22 against Dallas, 15 against the, the Jets with 20-plus opportunities in those games. So I think we are we're back to fully comfortable with Travis Etienne. I mean, I, I'm i playing everybody from Jacksonville, really. Like Christian Kirk, who's still somehow the wide receiver 14 on the year. He, he, he you has, see Tyreek Hill come out and talk about Christian Kirk? I did not. Tyreek Hill? Talk about Kirk. He was asking. I think they were asking him who the top five receivers in the NFL are. Wow. Okay. And he said he, you know, he said he could get Christian Kirk in there. He believed in him that much. Well, and obviously this free agent class at wide receiver has made a huge mark. Yeah. Not just wide receiver, but Evan Ingram, Kirk, and and Zay Jones. Yeah. And I'm I am willing to start all three. Uh, which there there have been a lot of questions. You go back to Zay Jones this week. So Trevor Lawrence is Jason start of the week as well. Been a top 12 quarterback 10 times this year. Quarterback three since week 12. You stay with that, even though there have been some tough weeks against the Texans. For quarterbacks, I think you you know, you know kind of go with what you know right now. And um, Trevor Lawrence has the weapons and the motivation to get in there and do something special. Brandon Cooks. Expected to practice on Friday, had a personal day on Thursday. I feel like they're just letting him do whatever he wants to do right now. <laughs> um, he was, you know, 76% of snaps, four for 34 and a touchdown. He didn't score twice last week? No. Nope. Uh, they called had a, one of them back? Yes, that's uh, what it was. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think he's the only play uh, on the on the Texan side. Royce Freeman <laughs> is yeah, – I know. I'm just, I'm just laying out <laughs> the information of – That's – he that's is. beyond What's nasty. What's the tier below nasty? Disgusting? Yeah, that's Ooh. just disgusting. We don't play disgusting. There's no upside. You don't be like, oh, dude, that's disgusting. It was, he had but 17, like, mm, 17 opportunities against the Tennessee Titans, uh, which is a very tough run defense, as Ezekiel Elliott found out. Stop talking me, about him. Wait, he had 17 opportunities last He did. So tell me he had like at least five fantasy points. Uh, I cannot do that. But he, <laughs> uh, Stop talking about him. Please. I will not. He was 60 for 32 on the ground, and I'm not playing him against the Jaguars. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, quick break. Back with a very important matchup.
All right, the San Francisco 49ers at 11 and 4 take on the Las Vegas Raiders the and Stidham's. Jarrett Stidham. <laughs> they're sitting at 6 and 9. They're not technically eliminated from the playoffs, but uh they're, they've eliminated they they've chosen elimination. <laughs> look, the the number one topic to discuss and the most di look, the thing I'm dreading the most on Sunday Live this week is answering questions around Devontae Adams and Josh Jacobs. Yeah. So I've been trying to do my research, trying to reach out to sources around the Raiders for their expectations. I'm hearing a couple of things. Number one, you know, and Mike mentioned it early in the week, they do want to get young talent opportunities. So Mike was saying that, you know, it kind of lends itself to Zemir White having opportunities in this game. However, you watch Devontae Adams and his, his press conference. You know, he's disappointed that Derek Carr, his best friend, is not playing. But he does seem like a guy that wants to go out there and, and continue finish the season strong. And what I'm hearing from Raiders camp is that they're committed to trying to convince Devontae Adams and Josh Jacobs to stay. So there is a motivation there okay. from sources within the team to do that. And so you have to kind of take those two pieces of information. The team has obviously made a choice at quarterback to move forward with Jarrett Stidham right now. But those are two players they want to see involved next year. They're, they're, we have said, okay, you're never going to see Josh Jacobs on the Raiders again because his frustration, it was, it was evident. But we also said money talks. Oh, yeah. And if you're, sure. if you're the team that brings the biggest, you know, check and you bring in a quarterback, you know, think about – scenarios this offseason Derek Carr's gone let's just say he's gone mm -hmm. okay Tom Brady right sure another uh, you bring in another quarterback of note that you're Garoppolo sure and and you you know you, there's a narrative that you can start to a story you can start to write about look we're just we're right there <clears throat> and that could convince a Josh Jacobs to come back so this week right now I think you're proceeding I'm proceeding with these guys in my lineup okay and I am willing to make a change and I'll tell you what I'm doing with them on Sunday morning. If something else comes out, we're just, our ears are to the ground just like yours. So that's the information I have. Do you guys have anything else to add to no, that circumstance? I, 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 th I think you summarized it well. Um, I, I would be surprised if we actually have really solid information in order to make a bench there. All we really have is fear and the reality is there was fear to be had without – like if Derek yes. Carr was playing, this is the San Francisco 49ers defense that's been great, especially against the, the run. They are far and away the most difficult matchup for running backs. They have not given up more than 60 rushing yards to any running back on the season. If you look at um, – goodness gracious, the you know, since week six, the, the first month of the season, they were okay, but – from that point on, you know, early on in the season, the last 10 games or so, they are uh, light years. Uh, they, they are averaging seven fewer fantasy points to the position than that position's average. So if, if, if the team they're playing against usually scores, you know, 18 fantasy points, they're giving up 11 on average. They're shutting them down. So now you have Jared Stidham at quarterback. So let's say Josh Jacobs gets his normal full workload. Is there a situation where you would choose a different option over him in a championship matchup, or do you just say Josh Jacobs is like the running back two on the season? You got to keep rolling with him. I think I think the line for me would be would be in the like Ramondre category. If sure. you were in a situation where you had Ramondre and Josh Jacobs, who are you starting this week? I would go Ramondre. I think I'd go Ramondre. Uh, Devontae Adams, by the way, the last three games have been yes. disastrous. 8.6 points, 4.8, and 2.5. Now you don't have Derek Carr, who, if Derek Carr is good at anything, it's force-feeding you know, his his top target. So, he, like Jason said, question one, will they play? Question two, will they play well? Those are To have both of those questions in the air for your championship week is risky business. You just need to know that with your other options. I don't want to play Darren Waller this week with Jarrett Stidham. Do you guys agree? I mean, Njoku, Komet, are you playing those players over Darren Waller? I would play those players over Darren Waller. This defense is great. The 49ers are great against tight ends, and you've got a backup uh, quarterback in there. You don't know where he's going to go with the ball. A lot of times backups come in. Maybe this is a Mac Hollins game. 
I mean, it it's very unpredictable. So if you're not a superstar, a bona fide, you got me here, then I'm not playing you right now. So that means I'm playing Josh Jacobs, I'm playing Devontae Adams, and I'm checking out. And then on the 49ers side, motivation-wise, they can wrestle <laughs> the number two seed away from Minnesota. That is on the table for them. I mean, theoretically, they could also get the number one seed, right? Because they could... I think it's technically alive. Just because the the Philadelphia situation. Yeah, I mean, it's but, not likely. But the more likely thing would be getting the number two seed away. They've won eight straight games. Brock Purdy's undefeated as a starter. Christian McCaffrey's in your lineup. The Debo news from earlier, he returned to a limited practice. But when you think about their long-term goals as a team, I'm not sure the two seed versus the three seed is the kind of thing that puts Debo Samuel on the field. Right? No, the, yeah, I agree. They have slight motivation, and slight motivation to the point where you could see a fourth quarter here that's out of hand, and they just they want that they're what's in their best interest is to kind of take it easy on people. So, you know, even with Christian McCaffrey, I don't see a monstrous you know game front to back. Another uh, he could do enough in one half. Oh, absolutely. He could he could go put up. 30 fantasy points in three quarters and then rest the fourth. But trust me, if that happens and you have him, you'll be pissed. <laughs> you, will, <laughs> you will not be okay with the 30 points. You'll be like, ah, don't, yeah, he could have got me 40. Yeah, greedy in week 17 for good for good reason. George Kittle, the tight end three on the year, two touchdowns each of the last two weeks. Please play him. The Jets are 7-8. and eight. They take on the 7-8 and eight Seattle Seahawks. The, the DK Sportsbook line here, New York minus 2. The over-under is 42.5. Both teams currently sitting just outside the playoff picture in their respective conferences. This is basically an elimination game for both of them. That's a good thing, right? We get to have top-tier performances, hopefully. Top-tier motivation, for sure. This is a – both teams need to win out to get in, which means if you lose this game, you out. So this is a playoff game for both of these teams. I, I, you know, usually in those situations, you're gonna love the home team. The fact that you know the 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 entire crowd has that same motivation uh, with them as well. And this game is being played in Seattle. I, I think one of the biggest question marks in this game is Tyler Lockett. Will he be there? Will he be active? Because he is a very important cog for making this offense roll. Geno Smith has been awesome this year just blown away every possible not expectation but every possible high-end hope he beat it but it's not all him it's the fact that he's got DK Metcalf he's got Tyler Lockett when you lose these pieces he's not able to overcome uh you know those injuries so well, hopefully Tyler Lockett is back and healthy and it should be brought up the same way you did with the Raiders you know if we had perfect weather for Trevor Lawrence against the Jets in that game. Like, the weather really overtook the narrative yeah, of the story. Yeah, it did. If we had perfect weather, there's no guarantee that Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, were effective fantasy options for your team that week. The Jets have been downright dominant. They are the best team against opposing wide receivers. When you bring in an injury and that matchup, it is a really risky situation. Now, Tyler Lockett is that good, right? Where you, Where you're, you know, the team, the need, the motivation – like, where do you draw the line on the Tyler Lockett start if he's active? He's in for me. No yeah. matter what. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, you, I, I, certain, I realize. Like, maybe you are just, just loaded with with studs on your bench, but for the vast majority of leagues, Tyler Lockett would be right back. In. Over Tyler, Dotson. Ty yes. Tyler Lockett uh, injured against the great Jets or Brandon Cooks. Tyler Lockett. Okay, how about... Uh, Drake London. Mm, that but, one's that one's interesting. I'd probably still go Lockett. Okay. And one more name here. Uh would you go Lockett or Christian Kirk? Hmm. That's that is a very difficult one. I'll play and Kirk. Very plausible too. Uh I I'd, I'd go on the Kirk side as well. Yeah, I lean Lockett. Mike White is back at quarterback for the Jets. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, that's fair yeah that's fair uh garrett wilson then suddenly the, all suddenly, of those claps were garrett wilson that was him and his family <laughs> he, and his friends he's he can clap so fast i love garrett wilson he's so I love great him. i love him um jason start of the week garrett wilson if garrett wilson has mike white he becomes really valuable yes and uh it even throws players like elijah moore into the 
what if category. Now, Corey Davis is back. It was a lot easier to say, hey, Elijah Moore is going to have a good game with Mike White when there was no Corey Davis. We haven't had the chance to even see this equation yet because Davis was not back with Mike White. But there's the opportunity for both those players to have roles. Tyler Conklin had 17 targets in three Mike White games. You break glass, you start Tyler Conklin at tight end if you have to. Yeah, the targets are there and the matchup is there. Would you start Mike White or Geno Smith? In this game, oh, that is a. Man. I've That's... seen this question quite a bit, and the the Seattle defense is so much worse <clears throat> than the Jets defense. If I had to, if I had to start one of them, I would start Geno Smith. Uh, Geno Smith has been regardless very... of Lockett. Uh, yeah, I, I I think almost almost regardless of Lockett, Geno Smith has has played better than Mike White. Mike White, they both have one elite wide receiver here, either Metcalf or Garrett Wilson, and then um, s some other options. Uh, Gino at home. If I had to play one of those guys, it would be that. But I had Gino, and I've benched him for you know Minshew or Hertz. You know, obviously the Goff tier and all those. Hopefully, you're not playing either of these quarterbacks. But there is a player in this game that I think has a good game. That is surprising. That I think a lot of managers are benching. And in in week nasty boy. Oh man, Zonovan Knight. I think is gonna have, yeah. Zonovan Knight is going to have a good game. And and the what is because we have seen back to back games with Zonovan Knight. Sucking two point three fantasy points, one point eight fantasy points. Even Haskins can beat that one. I out. don't know. Th that's the game I was worried about for <laughs> Haskins. But in those games, you actually played the Detroit Lions, who were shut down. Both of those games were Zach Wilson games, where he doesn't target the running back, sure, and the team is not afraid of anything he's going to do. This is a matchup against Seattle, who is really bad against the run really really bad against the run um with the quarterback back that will dump off passes he's been playing the same amount of snaps you know 48 percent 47 percent as he was when he was breaking out and looking great so I think just the matchup with the quarterback it scares my pants off yeah I mean I get it I'm not saying like but oh, I can see it happening you've got to start uh You're Zonovan Knight you know he's just a must start I, but in the category of uh, bad options that you could be throwing out there. I, I Najee think Harris or I, I would go Najee. Najee's been Najee's been really good. Okay. Uh, no, the logic stands up. I mean, the the Mike White difference in the offense. You know, one thing that they run more plays than basically everybody else when he's uh, out there. The opportunities, like you, you talk about percentage of snaps as though total plays don't factor in but they do oh they absolutely you play do. if you play 50 percent of you know 71 offensive plays versus 52 offensive plays mm -hmm. that is a big difference for your for your chance at performing both of these teams have lost five of their last six games so they are up against it and um gino makes me nervous against the, the jets defense he really does it, it will be a fun game with two teams that are desperate yeah and some uh defensive rookie of the year potential here yeah both sides and obviously Kenneth Walker is a is a start. Yeah. Oh yeah. Minnesota is twelve and three. They take on the seven and eight Green Bay Packers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line Green Bay minus three and a half. The over under is forty seven and a half. Uh Minnesota beat them in week one. For whatever reason, Jair Alexander decided to call that game a fluke. <laughs> Justin Jefferson's about uh, to break the all time receiving record, but a two touchdown game is a fluke, apparently. Watching Alexander's previous interviews. Oh, it was unbelievable. These, this it totally makes sense. Like this Alexander, he's he likes to have some fun. Can you imagine like uh like a theme park day with Jamal Williams and Jair Alexander? Oh man, that would be <laughs> like must watch TV. Do they have that's the most fun to do Dude. people could have in their lives get those guys get marshawn in there mm. and just it marshawn's the host yeah yes oh dude marshawn's the host and he's bringing these two guys together on a theme park tour nfl D make this happen off-season content you need it can you imagine them as like a, a trifecta of of counselors that you see <laughs> to kind of like help you through like depression you go into a room with those three guys oh cheer you right up yeah um <laughs> make like make them crime fighters i mean there's the there's endless opportunities here. I think they're just very likable fellas. They are. But this is a very stupid thing to say. I'm yeah. I mean he's Welcome very, to the he's show. very good. Not that Justin Jefferson needs <laughs> motivation. Right. But this was a game that I was already expecting Jefferson to be force fed as much as ever because he's on the precipice of this record. If he broke 
the record in this game, it would be in the same amount of games played as Calvin Johnson. Uh, the Green Bay defense, look, they'll be focused on him. Everybody always is. But Minnesota still in, in a position to secure the number two seed with a chance at the number one seed. It's a also a divisional matchup where you can't eliminate the Packers. Like that is just something that is not on the table for every one of these situations where a team has mixed motivation, right? Like it's not the 49ers versus like the Seahawks in division chance to knock them out. So the 49er motivation might be more in question. I, I, whether they show up and do it, I don't know. This is sure. in Lambeau. Um, Kirk Cousins doesn't get his his cozy home environment, but but the weather should be good. It's going to be chilly because it's Lambeau, obviously. But there's not a big wind, not a big precipitation. This is just there will probably be chilly as well. Oh yeah, available in the stands, to warm for you up. Sure, delicious. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, but the, the the environment should be good for a shootout. Uh, the the Vikings defense has been bad enough that the Green Bay Packers offense should be able to put up points, and the Vikings offense has been good enough that, you know, I don't think the Packers could stop them. So I'm loving this matchup. I want pieces in it. There's a lot of motivation. I hope that Christian Watson is active. We saw last week that he finished the game with the target share lead, even though he didn't play half the game. Um, which is pretty impressive. When he went out, he was up in the 35% market share. If 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 you've got Christian Watson and Alan Lazard and Romeo Dobbs, I, I just think this could be a, a high over-under game. I, I am very anti-Aaron Rodgers because we've, we've tried for weeks to tell you the matchup and the circumstance and the situation – it's there for him to take advantage of, and he doesn't do it. Geno Smith or Aaron Rodgers? Geno Smith. Aaron Rodgers is, they won last week, 13.3 fantasy points. They won the week before, 10.9 fantasy points. Both of those matchups were outstanding. They won the week before, 13.7 fantasy points. The matchup was outstanding against Chicago. This team has won, like, in their wins, they've scored over 30 points one time. This is not the the old Aaron Rodgers. And so if you were looking at this and you said, like, this is old Baker Mayfield, okay? Sure. That's the ex, that's the like name swap. So one touchdown is like where Aaron Rodgers is settling in. And I, I'm just tired of kind of going to that, that name and saying, yeah, well, the matchup's juicy, so it's going to work out. You can always end a sentence with, well, it could. Yeah. But the probable thing, I mean, we're in week 17. The probable thing is that Aaron Rodgers scores his average fantasy points, which is 14. That's the probable thing. He's had great matchups and hasn't done it. I'm much more excited about A.J. Dillon. I'm much more excited about, you know, the big play from a Watson. What are you or doing with Aaron Jones? Terrified beyond belief. So limited practices. Uh, he played through the ankle injury. Did he? I mean, well, like as in eight opportunities. So no, I know. I'm so just saying, like technically, he's played, but it has been it has been the AJ Dillon show four straight weeks inside the top 25 touchdowns in that span. I mean, the the weather has cooled off, and they've gone they've gone to the big fella, and and Aaron Jones. I uh, I mean, I don't know if yeah, you weather. you have to you have to believe this is completely on the injury, but at this point now, you with one week left. Of like, can you actually go back to Aaron Jones? I think that is a a real question. Tie the line: Algier or Aaron Jones? Algier, easily. Cam Akers, Akers. Or, I can't do that. I just <laughs> you can do that. I don't have the stomach for it. I can see him outscoring, but I would go Aaron Jones in that situation. Uh, if I had Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon, obviously I'm starting AJ Dillon. Okay, Isaiah Pacheco. Superstar. Oh man, I I would go Aaron Jones, Pacheco. Yeah, I I I'm more on the side with Andy. Of, it, I am terrified to start. Let me see Aaron if I can Jones. persuade you out of Aaron Jones for okay. a second. Okay, right. there's outcome. I I don't know if the highest tier outcome is there for Aaron Jones. AJ Dillon is playing super well. We already know that Aaron Jones is a very polar, you know, high low high low player, right? Mm-hmm. So then if your two outcomes are outcome one, which is a, a medium-tier game, and outcome two is a, a a disaster for your championship week because of injury, and he's off the field, he limps off again, he's been limited, 
I just feel like I'd be too afraid to risk the bottom for the middle. Does that make sense? Uh, it does make sense, but you're taking out the high end, which Aaron, you know, Aaron Jones high end. Obviously, he's he hasn't been doing it two weeks ago. He was the top twelve running back. Yeah, but I mean, he's one of the few players that can, you know, you think he has a high end even with the injury and with how AJ Dillon's playing. I think there is uh, the potential for a for a high end game in there. Like I said, there's other players I would start over Aaron Jones that you wouldn't usually do that, and it is a little bit scarier, including starting AJ Dillon over uh, Aaron. Uh, Aaron Jones but I I do believe that that uh, ability to have a big game in the this game environment still exists so Christian Watson we got word that he was supposed to be limited yesterday at practice he did not Uh, the quotes that we got at this point is they're the Packers they're hoping that the hip injury calms down (laughs) which is uh, it's not a good thing to say about an injury Uh, just hoping that he can play on Sunday. It's you're in a very scary situation. Vikings are, although allowing the most passing yards per game, second most adjusted or schedule adjusted fantasy points to the wide receiver. Lazard is in for me. And, Start of the week. And if I, I don't know where the flow chart is yet with Romeo Dobbs. Of if Christian Watson is active, are you still playing Dobbs? Like, is that a no? Okay, but it, but if Watson is out, you're definitely playing Dobbs. Yes. Okay. Willing to. <laughs> Definitely is not. A, I mean, that, okay. that that insinuates I'm locking him in. Sure, it's all based on options then. And if this question is for me, is that's literally J- my flow right. chart. I have Christian Watson and Dobbs, and that one of those two's in the final roster spot. And so, uh, Jason's just been shaking his head. By the way, for the last like <laughs> five minutes. So let's say Jason, because we don't have the info yet. Recording in the morning, limited practice for Christian Watson. That's you're going Watson over Dobbs. If he's limited, limited active, I'm. I'm well, you're Christian- not getting. No, you're only getting limited. You because he didn't practice yesterday, so you get one more report. If he's active, I'm playing Christian Watson. Okay, and Hawkinson's in. Please. Hawkinson is very in. He's yep. a great play this week. Please be bad. Come on, <laughs> I, I'm just there's saying. a lot of Foot Clan that are relying on T.J. Hawkinson. Yeah, but this week. we have expressed to the Foot Clan that we are completely for the people. We are for everybody, like even over our own fantasy teams, except when it comes to Week 17. Mm-hmm. We will give you the the our process of what we truly think is going to happen, but our rooting interests they are self they go right in right to us. <laughs> the Rams are five and ten. They take on the nine and six Chargers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line Chargers minus six and a half. The over under is forty two and a half. So uh, both teams at home in this one. They just paint the field Chargers colors. Justin Herbert, do you got the stones after he has kicked you in the? <laughs> The cojones in <laughs> the stones for two weeks. Um, Feels a little bit like it, a higher tier Aaron Rodgers situation. Yeah, it really does. I mean, this is a long season of him disappointing. He's throwing, you know, a total of like 20 fewer touchdowns than the year prior. The depth of targets are putrid. It feels weirdly like it's, it feels Tom Brady esque how much check downs and, Short passes are happening. Uh, you know, Keenan Allen is an absolute stud because he's getting 14 targets a game right now, but Keenan Allen's not down the field. Keenan Allen is, you know, just a better version of what we're seeing from Michael Pittman right now. I- and it works, but like that doesn't move your offense quickly. It doesn't put up high points. It doesn't help your quarterback have a great output. It helps Keenan Allen and PPR leagues have a great output. One finish with more than 20 fantasy points for Justin Herbert in the last 11 games. Go Rose. Kirk Cousins or Justin Herbert? Kirk Kirk's been on fire. Yes. Although man, I Kirk, I'll tell you right now, I know we've got our lineups figured out for the DraftKings segment. Kirk was my quarterback in that lineup for the majority of the week. Wow. He is not now because I am a little worried about the road matchup situation for uh, well, Justin Herbert's also on the road. Or, <laughs> oh no, he's at home. I, thought, I forgot they. Yeah, they're but it's technically the it's Chargers. specific to Lambo and Kirk in a game that he needs to perform in. But Herbert that does sound like where Kirk fails. That is where he tends to fail. Although I, I think you have to have more confidence in him right now because he has the better weapons. He has Hawkinson, Osborne, Jefferson, Cook. It's a lot. 
it's it's just a better situation where, yes, you can check down to Keenan Allen every week, but where's the big play? Yeah, where's the big play, man? Also, get bodied, Adam Thielen. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. Um, Austin Eckler limited on Thursday. Right now, we expect him to play. There was a good interview uh, with friend of the show Matt Harmon where you know he kind of said, "Look, he wants to be out there for every game. Like his choice is he wants to play 17. It's going to be up to the coaches." So uh, right now, look, the Vegas line tells us things, right? And it doesn't tell us that the Chargers are sitting important pieces. They're heavy favorites. The Rams scored 51 last week. They're still six-and-a-half-point favorites. Um, I think Eckler is in if he's in, right? If he if he's active, for sure, you, you have to go with him. What do you do with Mike Williams? I mean, he has been a player that has lost target share from the first and second half of the year. Are you playing Mike Williams with confidence, like Lazard or Williams? Oh, Lazard or Williams? If I think that's a Christian Watson I, yep. uh, question. If Christian Watson Three. is there and they could spread the ball around and Lazard becomes the number two target in that offense, I would lean uh, the other direction and and go towards Mike Willie. Cam Akers went bonkers last week. Has scored what six touchdowns in three weeks? He's, yeah, he's gone bonkers for a couple weeks in a row, and you know it's not just touchdowns. He's run in the last two weeks, 5.1, 5.4 yards a clip. This past week when he got 23 carries for 118 yards, looked really good. Obviously, that was um, an outlier game for this offense. Sure. I mean, Baker was perfect. The offense was perfect. But Denver, their defense has been so good all year. And it just seemed like they got to a mental breaking point. Obviously, the coach getting fired after that game. That, that, that tells you a lot, that the coach got fired after that game in his first year of coaching. So I, I'm obviously – I've been in the Cam Akers camp all week, the most bullish among the three of us. Uh, this is the number one running back in football over the last three weeks in fantasy points. And the team has had success. They've won two of, the th two of those three games – Obviously, having Baker there is providing uh, stability. So I am I would start Cam Akers uh, uh, almost in any circumstance possible. All right. Did we ask – I mean, I don't want to make people vomit, but did we ask Josh Jacobs or Cam Akers? You didn't. I thought you would. Okay. I'm I only was, asking I was Andy afraid to put it on public record. You, well, that's <laughs> – But I'm playing Cam Akers. Oh! Brother. Okay. The last three weeks, nasty. nasty. I don't. Is it though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nasty to start the number one running back over three weeks. Who's you know, Acres one, Barkley two, Henry three. Yeah, those are the numbers. Touchdowns will do that. Um, I'm all in on Cam Acres, and right. I I have no pride. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler Higby is a uh, it's he's a, a hot, streamer. He's in a high upside, uh, low downside. <laughs> Higby, he's a Higby. That's yeah. a new category of tight end. There's good ones, bad ones, and then there's Higbies. Yep. And Gerald Everett, I think you just move away from him. He's just deep Agreed. prioritized in the offense. Agreed. Um, I, I that that's another almost upset type of game. The Charger game. Fair. That makes, that makes think, a lot I of sense. I think the Rams there's, can win that game. There is very little motivation for the Rams. Their seating can move around a little the, bit. The Chargers. Or, yeah, sorry, for the for the Chargers. Their, their seating can move around a little bit, but some of that movement around is not even on, on them. Like, if they win out, they could move up if certain other things happen. If they lose out, they could move down if certain other things happen. So it's going to be very difficult against a, a, a depleted Rams team to Really go out there and say we're giving it everything we got. Couple primetime games left: Steelers seven and eight, Ravens ten and five. This one doesn't feel too complicated from a uh, fantasy standpoint. Uh, the over under is just thirty five points on DraftKings. The Baltimore uh, Ravens are two and a half point favorites. That's a low over under. We've seen these these battles before, and guess what? Week 14, 16 to fourteen. I if it's the exact same score, I won't be shocked. Um. The offenses, Tyler Huntley, Kenny Pickett, they can't move the ball consistently enough to give you a great deal of confidence in pass-catching weapons, including Mark Andrews, right? Like, you're probably you're going to play him this week. 
you're not playing them if you got them this week is what it feels like. You, yeah, I mean, when you play them, you're not playing them. Well, yeah, I'm saying you're probably out of the playoffs. Right, right. But if you have gotten here thus far you by playing them, just keep doing it. The rest of your lineup's great. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the, the toughest question is like Pat Fryermuth or Mark Andrews. Oh, man. The tight ends in this game where Mark Andrews has been the tight end 23, 23, and 19. Demarcus Robinson might not even play in this game. On I mean, Deshaun Jackson and Sammy Watkins, right? Yeah. Those might be your starting wide receivers for the 2022 oh, Baltimore man. Ravens. If you thought what they did in their backfield last year yeah. with, uh, what was it, Devonta Foreman? Or, sorry, uh, Devonta Freeman, Freeman. and uh, well, I think Latavius Lev was Bell. There. Lev Bell was there. Yes. And Latavius. And Latavius. They have upped the ante. They have said, Deshaun Jackson, you get to play football still. By the way, shout out to T.Y. Hilton. Not a bad game. Seriously. Yeah, he looks all right. Genuinely seems like the kind of OBJ help for your playoffs that they needed. But, uh, yeah, you've got you've got Watkins and Deshaun Jackson if you're feeling disgusting. If I had to go Mark Andrews versus Pat Fryermuth, I would still go Mark Andrews. The Steelers, are the over the course of the season, they've been pretty good. Pretty good defense, um, but they've that's the area of the field where you can beat them. Uh, I'd go I'd, Muth, and I don't bl I don't blame you at all. I mean, you're you're talking uh, the last three weeks. He just hasn't been good. They need Lamar Jackson back, but the team doesn't need Lamar Jackson back until the playoffs. Um, Najee Harris, J.K. Dobbins, playing both of them. My strong leg. <laughs> uh, yeah, you could play both of them. N you play in the left leg of J.K. Dobbins? Or <laughs> oh, definitely the right leg. Yeah, you need the I super mean, his fast right one. leg is fast. That left leg is just dragging behind him. J.K. Dobbins has the ability to be great, but you do need to realize that he, he needs touchdowns. He needs breakaway plays because he doesn't catch the ball a lot, and he's not one of these players who's playing 70% of snaps. A lot of times he's in the 30% of snaps. Uh, they run the ball a lot, and he is a talented player, so he, you can play him, but you're going to have variance in his games. Najee, on the other hand, he feels like he needs to be in. I, I think he's going to finish the week as an RB2. It's kind of what he's been doing. He had nine targets last week. Once wow. Mitch, once uh, Trubisky That's was old school. gone. Yeah, but it was nice to see him again involved in that way because he obviously has that skill set, and now you've got this rookie quarterback that might be going, oh, I can just – I figured I figured out a thing. <laughs> I can just complete easy passes to Najee. So we'll see. He's good enough uh, to be a RB2 started in most playoffs. All right. Capstone time. Buffalo 12 and 3. Cincinnati 11 and 4. Monday Night Football in Cincinnati. Buffalo minus one. Great weather. Over unders 49 and a half. Buffalo must win to maintain the number one seed. They have the tiebreaker with Kansas City. Um, that's a big deal. That's home field advantage. You want to play an arrowhead in the AFC title game? No. No. Uh, Cincinnati, you win out, you get the number two seat. You're still alive for the number one seat. Uh, Joe Burrow's never faced the Bills in his career. First time. And that is an exciting proposition to see what he can do. He's the quarterback two ahead of Josh Allen since week six. He's been that good, and you're going to have a full allotment of weapons. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon. Um, the only player that was in question was Hayden Hurst should be back practiced in full on Thursday wheels up wheels up for the Bengals I know you're conflicted Jason I know you don't want to be in the you know on the bus with he's, the Bengals this well, here's week. the thing he's not conflicted that's fair he is conflicted in terms of the friendship between <laughs> myself and Jason because he wants the league of record. He, he wants in league of record. He wants Joe Burrow to be bad, but for our team, he wants Joe Burrow to be good. And I completely understand that. If I were you, I would be rooting everything for the league of record because that is currently your most important league. Yeah. So the, I mean, every single uh, championship matchup that I have seen out there on Twitter includes players in this game you got to this game you know Joe Burrow is in so many championship matchups Josh Allen is in so many championship matchups you have just a slew of really important fantasy assets and this is going to be the capstone of championship week 2022 so I'm very very excited the way that I look at this game you've got two good defenses here really good defenses um you you had Patrick Mahomes you know, get shut down a little bit by the Bengals' defense. 
the running the running defense is very good too. They only give up 16 points a game. How do you break up Devin Singletary and, and James Cook? So the running backs, I am not excited to play in this matchup. Devin Singletary and James Cook, I think, are both going to have disappointing games. Uh, that if I had to start one of them, I'm starting Devin Singletary because of the fact that this game matters so much. Seems like a veteran game where when push comes to shove at the end of the game, you've got to have the guy out there that knows what to do, can't possibly make a mistake. So I would go Singletary over James Cook, but I want to get the receiving options out there. I view this as, you know, a, a great pitching beats great batting stupid baseball metaphor <laughs> where you've got two of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now not just playing a game, but playing Monday night football, prime time, playoff atmosphere game. And if the first half of this game gets off a little slow, I think at the end of this game, Joe Burrow takes over and he says, I can score on you. And every time he does, Josh Allen says, well, guess what? I can score on you. And they just go tit for tat at the end of this game. So I want all the pieces. I want, obviously, Jamar Chase is going to be great. Stephon Diggs, who's been sucking and dealing with an illness, I think he's going to be great. Did you guys follow uh, his his Twitter action the last couple of days? No, do tell. I mean, it's probably unrelated, but it's just one of those coincidence things that's pretty funny. Of You go back to December 27th, and you have Stephon Diggs tweeting, another night of feeding myself. Another tweet. Forced to use the skills I learned when I did two years ago in culinary school. Another tweet. This whole cooking for yourself I saw stuff. That. I saw that. Zero tweet. out of ten. Wouldn't recommend. Too tired to eat. And then you got to wash the dishes after. And then Stephon Dix misses practice with illness. <laughs> I, mean, I did see that. That was funny. It's, it's probably unrelated, but it's just. <laughs> hey, Diggs, get a chef. <laughs> Gabe Davis or DJ Chark? I would go Gabe, Gabe Davis. Davis. Uh, both, I think, are good plays. But it's kind of like what I was saying. I, I Gabe Davis, who is a uh, boomer bust option, this is the type of environment where if he booms and he's on your bench, you're going to cry because if you lose, I'll bet you his points would have gotten you there. Tyler Boyd or Greg Dortch? Probably, probably Dortch. Boyd? Like... If Boyd were completely healthy, and I knew for sure, I would go Tyler Boyd. But it's it, it's a little bit sketchy, you know. I mean, he had the hand injury three weeks ago. He comes back in the next week. He plays sixty percent of the snaps. Goes to play again because he said, "I'm going to figure it out." Uh, but he only played half of the game, and it there was four targets, three for twenty one. And then we saw uh, tr uh, Trent Irwin. Is that mm -hmm. the? Yep, Trent Irwin. He, he's the one who came in. I mean, this direct correlation of he. He plays uh, when Boyd is not in. Irwin goes in. He had some success. So that my concern is you have another situation where Boyd doesn't play a full game. All right, let's move on. Fantasy Face Off presented by DraftKings. My own son gets to watch me shame today. Mm, you're going to enjoy this one. You're going to like it. Let's spin that wheel. Another nail biter that I, of course, was on the wrong end of. Wheel of Shame. Yeah, whatever. Spin it. <laughs> Spin in the wheel. Spin the stupid wheel. We the wheel Joe is my Dirt. friend. What I'm not the heck? a cat. Oh, Rainy day. And it land is on. Moo. 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 What could this possibly be? Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I have no doubt that it will be great. <laughs> it's been a minute. It's been a minute since I've got to wear something ridiculously <laughs> suffocating. Yeah. Well, that minute is over because you're a cow face. Oh, that's so good. This reminds me of my famous fish face. I can't. <laughs> I can't tell you how horrible this is. Oh, we can hear. We can hear how horrible can it is. Can you see? Through the nostrils, I believe. Through the nostrils. I'm going to have to see through the face. <laughs> he, he, if uh, podcast listeners, he's having to manually open the cow mouth <laughs> to view and speak. Oh, man, that's unfortunate. 
Oh, man. I've, I'll I've kick... never been more claustrophobic. <laughs> you have any long <laughs> stories to tell, Mike? <laughs> Just, you know, a good, good childhood story. All right, let's get into it. So I will kick things off uh, at the quarterback uh, position here. I have Jared Garf. Uh, his DraftKings sportsbook over under sitting at a nice 267. He is just dominant at home. We have laid that out, and uh, the price is just right. At 5600, I cannot imagine not having Jared Garf, and I assume the cow has him as well. The cow nods yes. Okay, so we've all got Jared Garf. If you're d building a cash lineup, he's going to be the most. <laughs> <laughs> the cow is that a breath. I think that was a breath. The cow opened his mouth to breathe. Um, yeah, so, uh, Jared Goff, quarterbacks across the board, great cash player f at 5,600. All right, who you got at running back, Jay? At running back, I spent up 8,000 for Saquon Barkley uh, okay. against the Indianapolis Colts. I think the matchup is good. He's been on fire lately. And my RB2 is one that let everyone down last week, but his price went down for it. 6,800, Ramondre Stevenson. Interesting. Uh, at home against Miami, I think he gets back to being how good he's been all season. Cowboy. You okay over there? Oh, you're talking to me? Yeah, yeah you're, you're the cow. The, you're the cow Is boy. it my turn? Yeah. Sure. Wait, what about Mike's? You're, you're he, up first. He's wanting to go last. I went first last. on the quarterback. Oh, I got you. Um, Saquon Barkley for uh, 8,000. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good running back. <laughs> Leonard Fournette, fifty six hundred. Ah, uh, that's a good price for Leonard Fournette. Uh, I have at my running back position. I have Tyler Algier uh, against the Arizona Cardinals at fifty three hundred. And why not just stack that game with James Conner at seventy two hundred? Not a big fan of missing a couple practices with illness, but James Conner had since returning from his injury is on the field. Every single snap is absolutely dominating, and the matchup is great. I had those guys both in my lineup at different times, uh, not together. Um, I don't usually like having running backs together against each other, but glad to see you have it. This uh, is the worst one you've ever done somehow. <laughs> I don't know why. That's, I'm in a friggin' greenhouse. Yeah. That, that being said, you didn't do fish face. Also, your mouth is ruined right now. Oh, this is a good video. Um, all right, so uh, at wide receiver, I did stack Jared Garf with Amon Ross St. Brown, 7,800. The, ga the game environment's too good. I've got Garrett Wilson still at 5,500. The DraftKings just refuses to... Thank you. They just refuse to pay him an elite salary here on DraftKings. And then I'm going with another rookie, Drake London, all the way down Ooh. at 4,900. He's been a PPR machine okay. as of late. That Arizona defense doesn't scare me. So Amon Ross St. Brown, Garrett Wilson, and Drake London. I have Amon Ross St. Brown. I have Garrett Wilson. My difference maker there is <laughs> we're, we're riding the snake, fellas. DJ Moore against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 5,700. It is a make or break for this lineup. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you talk, when you have to do this disgusting hand-mouth open thing, I love it. I have Garrett Wilson. Yeah. My stack is DJ Chark. Oh, okay. 4,300. Not bad. And I have this guy named Justin Jefferson. Oh, oh no. Who's 9,500. Oh, man. That was in your original Kirk Cousins stack, I take it? Yeah. Oh, All right. All right. That's going to be fun. Hey, I hope you win because Justin Jefferson has 700 yards this game because he's in my league of record. Lineup. All right. At, uh, <laughs> at tight end, I got my man Schmevish Mangrum uh, against the Houston Texans, 4,400. Like. The price on Evan is is ridiculous. I wanted to, I was going to save money at the tight end position and put uh, Tyler Higby in, who is more than Evan Ingram, mm -hmm. which is I'm like, well, I'll save some cash here. Uh, Andy's wide receiver start of the week, Alan Lazard at 5400 against the Minnesota Vikings will be in my flex, and then my defense. You know I'm taking on the Jared Stidhams of the world. I got the 49ers at 2,900. Yeah, I have the 49ers at 2,900 as well. In my flex, I also have Andy's start of the week, but a different start of the week, Leonard Fournette, who is in Andy's okay. lineup at flex. And then I paid way down at tight end. I don't love having both Garrett Wilson and Tyler Conklin, but I did it because he's only 2,900. Yeah, that makes sense. The matchup is there against Seattle. Do I get to speak now? Yes, yep. please. Speak, cow. I have the 49ers defense. Moo. 
I have Tyler Algier Ooh. in my flex. Oh, boo. I have Trey McBride, Arizona tight end. Oh, huh? nice. You're going to take a nice. 3300 saving some cash monies. 33. The price per point on Trey McBride has got to be pretty bad. Hey, Mike, why don't you close the segment out? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get back to the page. Uh, that was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code BALLERS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Hey, hey, what are you getting? I have to of- share a story. <laughs> I want to share a story first, and I can't do it in a cow head. Now you got a cow hat, and I, I equally like that. Yeah, that's, um, that's not bad. I, I saw this video the other day. A melting cow hat. <laughs> Did you guys see this video about the uh, the scoring quirk in somebody's league where they have – it's all standard, normal type of scoring, but they have a penalty for missing an extra point of no, negative I, 50? No. Oh, oh, my, my goodness. Why? But you have to start a kicker then? You do not have to start a kicker. Oh, then you, then you never play a kicker. Yeah. And so uh, they, this person was in the semifinals, and they had Matt Gay, and Matt Gay's missed no extra points on the year, and they had a uh, thirty-five point lead, and Matt Gay missed an extra point, and they lost by fifteen. Oh man, that's can you imagine having a negative fifty? No, because here's the thing: you said I would, I would you, not be in that league. <laughs> I was going to say if you if you uh, like the easy thing is to say, oh, I'll just never play a kicker, but like a kicker. When we had them in our leagues, we, you know, that could be 15 points. It can. So then you're like, and they, they do rarely miss it. I mean, more more than, than ever before they miss yeah. them. But it's like, you know, Justin Tucker, has he missed one before? Yeah. He has? This, this year. This year. First one. Yeah, I think I it mean, was... that would just be the most, obviously, psychotic league ever. Yes. <laughs> so like, hey, remember all that? But the, imagine the hope you'd remember have. Remember those months and months of work you put in? Into mm. grinding the waiver wire, making all the trades, getting to the playoffs, and then a, a kicker sim- misses an extra point. And all right, I'm going out. back in. All right, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I will be with uh, Mike there, and I will I would not be in that league. All right, that is going to do it, everybody, for the fantasy footballers week 17. Good luck. Go get those hashtag Foot Clan championships. Moo. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.